Some impressive analysis from Bloomberg has revealed the cost of lithium batteries. I've been saying the cost was going to come down by 50%. I've heard this from numerous sources in China, but it hasn't. It's actually come down by just a tiny bit more than that. That means that right now, if you can mass manufacture an electric car, it's no longer more expensive to build an EV than an internal combustion engine vehicle. Now, the only reason that ICE automakers like the Volkswagen Group, like Toyota, etc., are saying that EVs are more expensive to produce, General Motors, is simply because they don't make that many of them. That's their only excuse. Here are the numbers behind this incredible fall in the cost of batteries. The fall in the cost of batteries doesn't reflect the true price fall as well, because whilst the price has come down enormously, efficiency continues to rise. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. And I want to say a big thank you to all of you who have joined joined us as members. Of course, that helps me to produce more videos. Also, I want to recommend the solar company who installed my solar system. I'll put a link in the description. If you're living in Australia, it's a no-brainer to get solar right now. My payback is so short, it's incredible. Bloomberg has reported that China's batteries are now cheap enough to power enormous global shifts in the market. This is not just any longer about electric cars. This is about energy storage. This is about an entire paradigm shift worldwide. We no longer need to model for when cell prices drop far enough to decarbonize road transport because the, that's already here. This is not some electric Viking Sam Evans crackpot making these claims anymore. This is not Tony Sieber just telling you what would happen. The future is it's already arrived. The media finally are actually letting us know about it too. Coming to grips with a crash. Prices for batteries in China are plummeting, says Bloomberg, and the implications are just starting to ripple outwards for the global automotive market. Over the last year, the price for lithium ion phosphate batteries, which are the most commonly used batteries in electric cars today, LFP, has dropped by 51% to an average price of $53 per kilowatt hour. The average global price of these batteries last year was $95 per kilowatt hour. So we've gone from 95 down to 53 US dollars. Now we know that price parity happens at anything below $60. That means if you're mass manufacturing electric cars, in theory, you may be able to actually make them cheaper than internal combustion. What's really insane about all of this is that it's not going to stop here. Experts such as Tony Sieber have said that the cost of sodium ion batteries, which will eventually replace a lot of the LFP batteries being used in cars, will plummet to 10 US dollars per kilowatt hour. Now think about this, the price just getting, just getting to this magical number of $95 per kilowatt hour last year, took us more than a decade from over 1,200 when the first Tesla Model S was sold down to $95 and now down to 53. When that price falls even further, as it will inevitably over the next few years, as more and more of this avalanche of battery factories that are being built right now actually come online, what's that going to do to the market? Right? When we have, look, the US is going to build, is building today more battery factories than are even planned in China. So we kind of have massive overcapacity. I've been saying this now for a long time. I was highly criticized by this for even some of you guys who follow the channel closely, but it will be too many. We have too many battery factories being built. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for it because this will, this will make the price of batteries fall at an even faster pace potentially. If you think about it, for every doubling of capacity, the price of manufacturing cost falls by 20%. For every doubling, the price falls by 20%. Now, even if that's not the case, even if the price only falls by 10%, this will be passed on to EV manufacturers. This will be passed on ultimately to consumers and EVs will unquestionably be cheaper than internal combustion within only a few years time. Now I predicted this would happen in 2030, but I believe this will happen much faster now. It could happen as early as 2026 or even 2027, where we see electric cars selling for less than we see internal combustion cars across the board for all market segments. There are several factors driving battery prices lower, says Bloomberg. The first is raw materials prices, which have fallen sharply 
over the last 18 months. The cathode is where most of the raw material costs in a battery come from. And the cathode share of total costs from an LFP cell in China has fallen from 50% at the beginning of 2023 to less than 30% this year. So cathode cost declines in the cost of cathodes have had a huge impact on battery prices. The second driver is overcapacity. That's leading manufacturers to cut prices to maintain market share. It's not overcapacity because there's not demand. EV sales have increased in China by 30% this year. Battery deployment from China, from Chinese manufacturers, has grown by nearly 50% this year. It's not like the, the demand isn't growing. It's just that companies are building more factories and more battery supply. It's growing at a faster pace. So this is leading manufacturers to cut prices to maintain market share. BYD and CATL, they're the two leading drivers of this. They're the ones cutting prices probably the most. China's battery production is already higher than global EV demand, and that overcapacity problem could get worse before it gets better. What this is leading to, though, is more and more countries and states and energy companies are jumping on board the battery storage bandwagon and they're deploying batteries at the fastest pace in human history to back up solar, wind, and even to back up other f other fuel sources. I mean, we haven't seen this before, but it has begun over the past six months that even fossil fuel factories are being backed up in some places by batteries. Overcapacity tends to lead to competitive shakeouts that shift volume toward the most efficient battery plants with the newest production technology, while others fall by the wayside. Average capacity utilization of battery plants in China fell from 51% in 2022 to 43% in 2023, and it will be lower again this year. The only way for these companies to actually become efficient, for the ones that are not, is to get more contracts to sell more batteries. BNEF's bottom-up battery costs model shows how close average prices are now to estimated manufacturing costs, indicating that margins for vendors are shrinking. That said, BYD and CATL are making record profits. So even though battery prices are coming down, manufacturers are still making money. Raw material costs, overcapacity, and margin compression from manufacturers account for the bulk of what's going on, says Bloomberg, but there's also a significant shift in terms of technology and manufacturing process improvements happening. So companies are saying, well, okay, we've got huge competition now. We need to be more efficient. How do we become more efficient? How do we make batteries cheaper? Not just raw material costs, not but just raw material costs driving down the price of batteries, but how do we make those batteries cheaper from our end? How do we massively improve our efficiency? China's battery companies, well, the two biggest in the world, CATL and BYD, who own more than 55% global market share, continue to invest heavily in research and development, automation and additional factories, and they're launching new products at a frenetic pace. Well, in the case of CATL or CATL, they have, they have launched five new lithium ion phosphate batteries within the past six months. One of them is rated for a guaranteed 1.6 million kilometers. All these factors together mean that Bloomberg NEF's battery team is expecting low prices to persist for at least the next several years as prices continue to fall. This will put more pressure on internal combustion. As the sales of internal combustion ve engine vehicles decline, the cost to manufacture them will increase. And the cost to actually sell them is increasing as well, as carbon capture is not doing its job. Obviously, we know that. And the reality is that these companies, Stellantis and others, are having to pay billions of dollars to companies like Tesla and even Chinese automakers in order to purchase carbon credits. So the cost of selling an internal combustion car is not just the face cost that you see. You see the cost of the price and you think, okay, well, Volkswagen maybe made a 6% profit on that, very, very low profits at this point in time, but their profits will continue to shrink as they make less. The Volkswagen Group said that their factories in Germany are running at under 60%, which means they are incredibly inefficient already. As sales drop and as the capacity utilization drops to below 55%, the price to make every car in those factories will grow.
The same will apply to Toyota. These ultra low battery prices have major implications for the automotive and power sectors. Battery cells at $50 per kilowatt hour means the technology to decarbonize most of road transport globally is already here, as opposed to some future scenario, as opposed to me saying, hey, prices next year are gonna be this, prices the following year are gonna be this, we're already there. Pack level prices for the most sold battery chemistries have been below the often referenced 100 US dollars per kilowatt hour land benchmark in China since October of 2023 last year. And lithium ion phosphate pack prices are now at $75 per kilowatt hour. That's the pack price. So the sell price is around $51 per kilowatt hour, up to 53, 51 to 53, but pack prices are $75 per kilowatt hour, which is incredibly cheap. At that price, EVs can be priced below combustion cars in most vehicle segments, marking an enormous global shift. This channel, this is all about this. This is an incredible period in history where we're seeing disruption. Disruption over the next few years will be at its, will reach critical pace to the point where internal combustion companies, or legacy automakers will begin to go bankrupt within the next few years. China is the world's largest auto market now, and battery EVs, electric vehicles, and plug-in hybrids are the cheapest drivetrain by average transaction price in China, even after stripping out mini city cars. So if we remove cars like the Wuling Hongwan Mini, which costs five, five and a half thousand US dollars, remove those vehicles, it's still cheaper to buy an EV or a plug-in hybrid, and it's also much cheaper to run them. It will take some time for those prices to be fully reflected outside of China, of course. But some of that is already happening, particularly in places like Australia. Even today, battery prices across different applications are converging as vendors hunt down new sources of demand. That's good news for commercial EV manufacturers that typically have paid a significant premium for batteries compared to the actual car market. Almost two thirds of EVs in China are already cheaper than in their internal combustion engine equivalents. And many cheaper electric models are planned for launch outside of China in 2025 and 2026. These Chinese car companies will launch an avalanche of models over the next few years. They already have, but they'll increase those numbers exponentially. The stationary energy storage market may be the biggest beneficiary. Crashing battery prices make the eco economics of adding large scale energy storage much more attractive. Prices of turnkey energy storage systems are already down 43% from a year ago. In other words, installing batteries with solar is much cheaper now than simply running existing coal power plants in most places in the world. And BNEF is watching for that segment to soak up some of the additional supply with prices potentially going down even more. Overcapacity isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Bloomberg expects global stationary storage installations to rise to 155 gigawatt hours this year, up a staggering 61% from last year. All of this underscores how the harbingers of scarcity were wrong. So far, very, very wrong. Over the last four years, there was a steady drumbeat of predictions that batteries and battery metals would be in short supply, indefinitely forcing the price of EVs and batteries upwards. But that didn't happen. Toyota was one of the fear mongers. They told everyone there wasn't enough lithium to go around. They lied about this. They were one of the most prominent companies to voice this view, claiming falsely only last year that there were not enough batteries to go around and that sharing them between hybrids was a better way to reduce emissions than deploying fully electric cars. Those claims were extremely incorrect. They were a farcity. They were a joke as battery prices continue to plunge. In fact, Toyota said there was only enough batteries worldwide for every car to have a one kilowatt hour battery. Now, obviously the average EV battery size is around 65 kilowatt hours. It appears as though those claims were utterly nonsensical. Lamborghini's plan is to offer its plug-in hybrid supercars as long as possible beyond the European Union's planned 2035 phase out of new combustion engine vehicles. Other automakers might be hoping to do the same thing. But here's the thing, by 2035, the cost of batteries will be so low that putting an engine in an electric car would make 
absolutely zero sense. Thank you.